Good day, everyone. In this PowerPoint presentation, we are going to discuss about the systems theory. But before anything else, here is the expected learning outcomes once the presentation is over. First of all is the introduction of the theory, where we discuss what is it all about. Secondly is the background of the theory, where we will figure out how it started and who founded such theory. And lastly is a summary of the theory in order to ensure that one has learned something in this PowerPoint presentation. Here is the introduction of systems theory. Systems theory is the interdisciplinary study of system and considered to be a specialization of systems thinking. It is content-free and applicable to many fields of study. It studies the society as a complex arrangement of elements, including individuals and their beliefs as they relate to a whole. Several management theories have evolved over a period of time. Systems theory is one of the most important theories in management due to the fact that it is able to recognize the relativity of perception may in itself serve to expand our understanding of our role in the universe. It provides a framework for us to examine and understand our society as well. In addition, its approach provides a common method for the study of societal and organizational patterns. In nursing, systems theory branched out from the general systems theory proposed by the biologist Ludwig von Bertalanffy in 1940, which was then furthered by Ross Ashby in 1964. Systems theory has been applied in developing nursing theories and conducting nursing researches. Now let's talk about the father of systems theory, Ludwig von Bertalanffy himself. Carl Ludwig von Bertalanffy was an Austrian biologist known as one of the founders of general systems theory. It is an interdisciplinary practice that describes systems with interactive components applicable to biology, cybernetics, and other fields. He was born on September 19, 1901 in Asgersdorf, Vienna, Austria. His father is Gustav von Bertalanffy and is a prominent railway administrator, and his mother is Charlotte Vogel. He was an only child and studied at home by private tutors until he was 10. His parents got divorced when Ludwig was 10 and got remarried outside the Catholic Church. For his education, he started his studies at the university level in philosophy and art history at the University of Innsbruck, and then at the University of Vienna. He chose biology over philosophy of science, as according to him, one could always become a philosopher later. Later on, he finished his PhD thesis in 1926, which is the FECNA and the problem of higher order organization. He died on June 12, 1972 in Buffalo, New York, United States at the age of 70. Today, Bertalanffy is considered to be a founder and one of the principal authors of the interdisciplinary school of thought known as the General Systems Theory. According to Weiko Wicks, he occupies an important position in the intellectual history of the 20th century. His contributions went beyond biology and extended into cybernetics, education, history, philosophy, psychiatry, psychology, and even sociology. Some of his admirers even believe that this theory will one day provide a conceptual framework for all these disciplines. Background of the theory Systems theory was first proposed by Ludwig von Bertalanffy as general systems theory, which has the following. First, it includes purpose, content, and process, breaking down the whole and analyzing the parts. Second, the relationships between the parts of the whole are examined to learn how they work together. Third, a system is made up of separate components. The parts rely on one another, are interrelated, share a common purpose, and together form of a whole. Fourth, input is the information that enters the system. Fifth, output is the end product of a system. Sixth, feedback is the process through which the output is returned to the system. General systems theory has the following assumptions. All systems must be goal-directed, 
A system is more than the sum of its part. A system is ever-changing, and any change in one part affects the whole. Boundaries are implicit, and human systems are open and dynamic. Basic Elements of a System A system has three basic elements, which are input, processing, and output. The other elements include control, feedback, boundaries, environment, and interfaces. But in Ludwig von Bertalan Fisch Systems Theory, there are four elements that will be discussed. Systems theory is an exchange theory. Parts of the theory that become exchange are the following. First, input is the information, matter, and energy received from the environment. Second, throughput is a process used by the system to convert information, matter, and energy with the system. Third, output, it refers to the product or service which results from the system's throughput or processing of technical, social, financial, and human input. Fourth, feedback, which are the information about some aspects of data or energy processing that can be used to evaluate and monitor the system and to guide it to more effective performance. Like all systems, the nursing process has a specific purpose or goal. The goal of the nursing process is to organize and deliver patient-centered care. As a system, the nursing process has the following components, input, content, output, and feedback. An input for the nursing process is the data or information that comes from a patient's assessment, in which how the patients interact with the environment and the patient's physiological function and others, and follows the system which has the following content of nursing process that involves assessment, Nursing diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Then comes the output, is the end product of a system. And in the case of the nursing process, it is whether the patient's health status improves, declines, or remains stable as a result of nursing care in the feedback part. Characteristics of the theory It has the following communication. Communication mechanisms must be in place for organizational systems to exchange relevant information with its environment. It provides for the flow of information among the subsystems. System, subsystems, and supersystem. Systems are set interrelated parts that turn inputs into outputs through processing. Subsystems is the step that does the processing of the objectives within an organization. Supersystems are other systems and environment of which the survival of the focal system is dependent. Boundaries, the part of the system that separates it from its environment. There are four types of boundaries involved in the process. First, physical boundary, which prevents access. Second, linguistic boundary is the specialist language. Third, systemic boundary are the rules that regulate interaction. Fourth, psychological boundary is anything that marks a limit or restricts. Goal directedness. Systems are goal oriented and engage in feedback in order to meet the goals of the organization. Also, every part of the system is interdependent with each other, working together towards the goal. Plastic view. Systems theory focuses on the arrangement of and relations between the parts that connect them into a whole. The mutual interaction of the parts makes the whole bigger than the parts of themselves. Properties of a system. Equilibrium. A human's ability to regulate input and output. System must maintain a balance or hemostasis for survival both internally and externally. Adaptability. A system should survive in the changing environment. Interdependence. It is a change in one part of the system will result in a change in another part of the system. Independence. It is where a particular part of the system has some responsibility for some functionally related activity. There are two types of systems, open and closed. A system is composed of separate components. The components are interrelated and share a common purpose to form a whole. Open system. An open system, such as nursing process, continuously interacts with their environment, have dynamic interaction of components, and can be self-regulating. There is an exchange of materials, energies, and information between the system and the environment. Factors that can change the environment also affect an open system. Closed system, theoretical systems that do not interact with the environment. It has to fix relationships among system components and not influenced by the environment or surroundings. The basic principles of systems theory. A system is greater than the sum of its part. Every system, living or mechanical, is an information system. A system and its environment are highly interrelated. The greater the degree of systemization, the more efficient the operation of the system. 
The effectiveness of the system depends on the optimization of the system. A highly complex system may have to be broken into subsystems so each can be analyzed and understood before it reassembled into a whole. Application of system theory can guide decision makers in understanding, modifying, and controlling the organization actions. All functions of the system's theory, including input, throughput, output, adaptation, and feedback, are essential to the exchange of ideas and are constructive to the nursing process and query and research. Many nursing theories have drawn from the works of von Bertalan Fee on system theories. And these are Newman's System Theory, Rogers' Theory of Unitary Human Beings, Roy's Adaptation Model, Imogen King's Theory of Goal Attainment, RM Self-Care Difficult Theory, and Johnson's Behavior System Model. The Advantages of the System Theory It focuses on the environment and how changes can impact the organization. Broadens the theoretical aspects for viewing the behavior of organizations. It is designed to deal with complex tasks. It aims in meaningful and their management. Facilitates interaction between organization and the environment. So now the disadvantages of the system theory. It doesn't focus on specific task functions. It is over-conceptual. Unpractical, it changes in environment directly affect the structure and the function of the organization, and it doesn't explore the impact of interpersonal relationships. To conclude, the system advocates envision the organization as being made up of interdependent factors including individual groups, attitudes, motives, formal structure, interaction goal status, and authority, if all parts of the organization are not coordinated internally, then organization goals cannot be achieved. To sum up everything that we have learned, the system theory is not a prescriptive management theory. It attempts to widen the lens through which we examine and understand organizational behavior. It emphasizes on communication and it views the organization as a whole. So that is the system theory and thank you everyone for listening.